My name's John Livermore and I own a Mitsubishi Evo 9 MRFQ 340 is what it started out as. When I was younger, the dream car would have been a, a Lamborghini, uh, probably a Contash. But then as I grew up, I started to get a lot into the Japanese car scene. Uh, probably because I lived in Asia for 10 years um, and the Evo was one car that I always wanted. I did the usual, the remap, uh, the twin plate, three port solenoid, three inch exhaust, and we got it running about 400, 400. So then we went for like the manifolds, things like that, and we managed to get her to about 430, 430. And that's where my engine tuner, Indigo GT, Anthony there said to me, okay, dude, we're kind of on the limit now of, of the car. And he wasn't wrong, because I was out having a play one night, um, launched the car and the whole rear end decided that it didn't want to be inside anymore and I lost the rear diff, prop shaft, things like that. And that's when this started. But at, at that time, without me knowing, I was, I was also going through uh, cancer, but I didn't know that I had cancer. The moment I found, sort of found out and I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, it was time to build that Evo and a lot of focus was put on the Evo during my chemotherapy and my cancer treatment. We parked the car up and my mate Lance, who helped me build it every step of the way, he was there literally from start to finish. Um, he got underneath the car straight away and he was like, mate, rear diff, prop shaft. So I got straight on the phone to Indigo and it was, I think it was half 11 at night and I'm like down the phone to Anthony going, talk to America because I want a rear diff, I want this, I want that. So he's, yeah, call me in the morning. Spoke to him the next day, we ordered the rear diff from America. Um, we started to rebuild the exhaust because it took out the center section of the exhaust when the prop shaft went. And at the time I just started my carbon company, which is a Daibutsu R. We, we just started that and I had a small warehouse full of Evo parts that was waiting to go on the car, but I just never got around to the right time to do it. And I'll always remember Lance knocking on my door one morning because at the time he lived next door to me. And he knocked on my door holding an Evo wing made out of carbon and he just said, yeah, we're gonna carbon the car. And I was like, good thinking, now's the time. And the first stage of this build was ju just to get the carbon done. So we did the wings, the bonnet, the boot, the doors, uh, all, all the interior. It was literally like a ratchet set, screwdriver set, couple of floor jacks, some axle stands, and we made that. Although I was there and I was helping, I knew I wasn't much help anyway. Because I mean, after a session of chemo, you're not the strongest guy in the world. But everyone rallied around, you know, and it, while the car was being built, it was also a case of if I was down in the dumps from my treatment or having a rough week, I just had the help. And it, and it was just nice to know that I had friends around and I had friends who were gonna be there through thick and thin. I think the, the positivity of having something else to focus on and knowing that all my friends who were involved were always there for me no, no matter what, no matter what time of night, no matter what time of day, if something needed doing on the car or if I weren't great in myself, they'd, they'd be there, you know, and that kind of gives you that strength and that positivity that I think you need to come out of that positively like. When I first found out that I had cancer, in all fairness, I'm one of them guys that will always put a positive spin and take the mick. I kind of decided that I was gonna approach the cancer in the same way as I'd approached everything else that made me feel down in my life. I just made a joke out of it, really. My mum, bless her, she was like awesome through the, for the whole chemo. And, and I can honestly say I wouldn't be here without her. She was amazing during it. But she'll often say how she was shocked at how we would leave chemo in fits of hysterics and laughing because it was the only way that I was going to get through it. And for weeks leading up to, to like having biopsies and things like that, I'd be like working on the car with, with, with Tom who used to come up on a regular basis. And I'd be there and all of a sudden I'd just go, oh, you can't see me, I can't do it, gotta stop. And he'd be like, dude, how can I? Like, why are you making these jokes? But it was, for, for me, it was just, I had to put some sort of a light spin on it and a little bit of humor. But yeah, it was scary, you know? I mean, I, th I think I almost masked that also with the humor. The fact that no matter how you try not to think about it, at the same time, cancer takes lives. Like there's, there's a lot of people out there who lose loved ones from 
cancer from the c cancer I had. And yeah, it's frightening. You have to prepare yourself to die because that could happen. And then at the same time, you also prepare yourself for a massive fight because you know that if you don't fight, then chances are you're not gonna make it through. So yeah, I just dug deep and I decided that I was gonna be here to annoy people still and yeah, and I, and I still am. We had the moment when the engine bay and stuff needed painting and it was in the middle of winter, it was really, really cold, it was December and I'd literally just come off of a chemo session the week before, so I was pretty rough and I really didn't fancy obviously sitting in a cold unit trying to spray the car and paint the car and all the lads rallied round and I think they was, uh, they, was, they was there till like two in the morning finishing it off making sure that the car was right sanding it down and then the next day they all they all woke up they all turned up again and they sprayed the car like all the bay and stuff ready for the engine to be dropped back in i just sort of kept my head up and i knew that i had to fight but i mean there'd be some sort of days where like you just wake up in the morning and you just be sat sat in bed or whatever and all of a sudden it could dawn on you that these moments could be gone soon and you won't be here anymore and that whole sort of legacy issue and things like that but then that helped to get the car where it is now, you know, and just to just ply everything I had, just plow it into making sure this car was finished. So it, if I did go, then there was something here that people would have to remember me by. It's, it's running 702 brake, 590 odd foot pound of torque. It's a precision 6266 turbo. It, it's just had a lot of money sort of thrown at it. I understand that and like, but, but it's, it's not just the money built. I mean, this thing has been built with these hands and the hands of my friends. And but I just think unless you've actually bonded with your car, like you've gone out for the day in your car, you've hit a nice A road, especially in this and where I live. I mean, I'm surrounded by, by like North Wales countryside. I'm like 20 minutes half hour from the Evo Triangle. And I'll always remember one day it was me in the car. We was up there nice and quiet. And obviously I was sticking to the speed limits and having a nice day out. And there was just a moment when I just thought, yeah, this is awesome, man. this is what it's all about. Just flying along, I had my friends there as well in their cars and we was all just enjoying a nice drive and it just kind of dawned on me that this is why I'm into cars. It was that moment that made me realize I was into cars. If you've got friends and family around them, use them because that's what they're there for. They're there for you to be able to look at them and gain strength from, for them to give you strength and to just get a positive goal in your mind, even if it's something that like, you've always wanted to do. Just keep that goal in your mind and just work towards it. There's nothing better than hearing the loud pedal and opening her up going down the road and hearing the wastegate and the turbo boost and all that stuff. I mean, that's what it was really built for. Taking my time with life now a little bit more and sort of, I know it's very cliche, but I'm enjoying the things that I did take for granted before. And I'm, and I'm accepting that I, I used to be very, very goal orientated and I still am goal orientated. And I put a lot of effort into my businesses and things like that. But recently they're taking a little bit of a backseat just so I can be me and do me a little bit. Yeah, everyone knows who, who should know, just like thank you, you know. <laughs> to me, I can probably sit here and say, yes, this car did help save my life. Really nice noise, and it looks insane. Just that massive wing behind me just makes me giddy like a schoolgirl. <laughs> There's a wing. <laughs>